John 14 and 12, Jesus said, Great works have I done, but greater works shall ye do. GWC Ministries is a family-oriented ministry designed to teach God's Word. We share simplistic, practical teachings on who God is, why you are here, and where you fit in His plan. Our mission is to empower you to go forth and perform great works. Tune in to hear Elder Stephen Gibson. He is transparent, authentic, and intentional, and he believes everyone should hear the gospel of Jesus Christ, including you. Pastor Stephen and Sandy Gibson are some phenomenal people, and they truly, truly love the Lord. Trust and believe they have a word for each and every one of us. They have a word for the young people. They have a word for the single people. They have a word for married people. You name it, they have it. I want you to know about GWC ministry. GWC ministry is a ministry that believes in worshiping God. If you don't mind praising God, if you like to give God glory, if you like to hear his word, GWC ministries broadcast is the place to be. You are tuning in live to GWC Ministries Empowerment Night, and we are in the midst of our Empower Hour. Can we get excited for Empower Hour? Hello, this is Celebrating This Season with GWC Ministries and Pastor Steve Gibson of Illinois. Jesus loves you. Nigeria loves you, Africa celebrates you, and heaven celebrates you. I'm glad to share this season with you. This is from your sister, Pastor I.T. Dennis, giving you a shout out from Nigeria. God bless you. Hallelujah. 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 Father, we just thank you, Lord. We thank you for another day, Lord, for this is the day that you have made and we will rejoice and be glad. And Father, I thank you for all that you've done and all that you're going to do, Lord. Lord, I come before you and I repent of my sins. I ask you to forgive me for anything that I've said, I've done and have grieved your spirit. And Father, even more importantly, Father, forgive me of my motives. Any motives that I have, Father, that are not, that don't align up with your word, Lord. I'm asking you to forgive me, Lord. Father, forgive your people, Lord. Father, help us not to twist and turn the word to fit our agenda. But Lord, help us to submit and humble ourselves before you, Lord and surrender our will and our way to you, Lord. For you died on the cross for us, Lord. You gave your life for us so that we may have life and life abundantly. Father, we thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Father, even grieve your spirit in the Garden of Gethsemane where you sweated great drops of blood. And you gave your life on the cross for us, Father. You even spent three days in the belly of the earth, Lord. Father, we thank you, Lord, that you sent your son down here to redeem us back unto yourself because you love us so much. We love you, Father. We bless your name, Lord. Father, help, help us, Father. Clothe us with a cloak of humility, Father. Keep us humble before you. 
We don't want it ever to be said, depart from me, you work of iniquity, for I never knew you. Lord, help us, keep us near you, Lord. Draw us even closer to you, Lord. We, we want to be your servants. We want to spend time with you and be a part of that engrafted vine. Father, we thank you, Lord, for the word, Lord. Bless the man and woman of God. We cover this ministry with the blood of Jesus. And I bind up every word curse spoken over this ministry. Hallelujah. Because when we curse the ministry, we're cursing you, Lord. So, Father, we forgive those, Father, that have put their mouths on the ministry and on your servant, Lord. Father, we cover this ministry with the blood of Jesus. We cover the word, Father. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, that the word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. We thank you for this time of prayer, Father. We thank you that the, Father, I just bind up every spirit that would hinder the people that will uh, uh, infiltrate or try to uh, distort or distract the people from hearing the word. Father, we cover this word with the blood of Jesus. Father, no weapon formed against your people shall prosper, Father. Those that are listening, Father. Oh, Father, we bind up every spirit that would try to come and try to steal the word out of their hearts. For, Father, we decree and declare that thy word have I hidden in our hearts that we might not sin against thee. Father, we thank you for it right now. And we be careful to give you all the honor, glory, and the praise. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of our Lord Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen, Mother Lawson. Good morning, GWC Ministries, Greater Works Church Ministries, Inc. Stephen Gibson, founder and pastor, a.k.a. Pastor Steve. Our weekly order of gatherings, 9 a.m. Sunday School Works, online Sunday School 2.0. You can also catch it on Facebook. YouTube, IG, TikTok, LinkedIn, and Twitter. 11.30 a.m. WordWorks online broadcast. You can catch it on Facebook Live and YouTube. 6.45 p.m. online Thursday prayer and 7 p.m. empowerment night, e-night Bible study. You can also catch that on Facebook, YouTube, IG, TikTok, LinkedIn, and Twitter. 9 a.m. Saturdays, Mission Works, Feed the Hungry, Soul Winning, Counseling by Appointment, Marriage Works, Family, Individuals, etc. Please plan to faithfully attend any and all gatherings. For more information or need prayer, Email info at gwcministries.org or call 708-925-7954. We want to welcome everyone to our live online GWC WordWorks broadcast, where we believe your blessing, your breakthrough, your miracle is just one word away. This virtual party would not have been the same without you. Our theme for 2024 is knowing him more in 2024. Please note, all services will be hosted online only until we secure a new venue. Special thanks to our GWC Empower Partners for your faithful donations and prayers. Become an Empower Partner today by sowing a monthly seed. GWC is a 501c3 Nonprofits, so donations may be tax deductible. Cash app money sign GWC Ministries 67 Zale 708 925 7954. Givelify GWC Ministries of Beecher or mail PO Box 291 Olympia Fields, Illinois 60461. GWC new members class are on Sundays immediately following Sunday School 2.0. All new members and those looking to join our function in the church are required to attend. Do you love studying the Word of God? Do you feel your you God 
has gifted you to teach or called you to the ministry of teaching. Pastor Steve is looking to add teachers to our online Sunday School 2.0. Contact him for more details. Plan to attend new members class with Pastor Steve immediately following Sunday School. All new and watch care members are expected to attend. E night is my night. Plan to attend our weekly 7 p.m. online Thursday empowerment night Bible study where Pastor Steve breaks the scriptures down for us. Plan to attend E health night on Thursday, 418. That's April 18th at 7 p.m. Guest healthcare professional Dr. Rhonda Morris of Baytown, Texas. Topic: You are what you eat. Free, free everyone. CPR training. If your loved one, your child, or even your infant pass out, would you know how to save them? In response to your request from our recent eHealth segment on CPR, Nurse Mary Turner of Houston, Texas is hosting a free, guys, free two-hour Zoom meeting class on Wednesday, April 24th at 6.30 p.m. Central Time for our GWCE members and viewers. Registration is required. So everyone, if you do want to attend this free CPR training on April 24th at 6.30 p.m., and that is Central Time, you must register. Go to our GWC Ministries Facebook and click on the Zoom registration link. Again, go to our GWC Ministries Facebook link and click on the Zoom registration link. Our prayer list. Sister Kim Ford out of the hospital recovering. Minister Darren Beatty and the entire Beatty in the loss of their father, Emmett Beatty. Elder Derek Triplett and family in the loss of his father. Millicent McIntyre and her daughter, Cece, who lost of her father in a fatal car crash last week. All suffering grief from a loss of a loved one. If you or someone you know is sick, hospitalized, or your loved one has passed away, please, please let Pastor Steve or Lady G know so we can add them to our prayer list. And we can all provide prayer and support. Text or call Pastor Steve at 708-925-7954. Online viewers, let us know on social media, call or email info at gwcministries.org. Next Sunday, April 21st is our first lady, Lady G birthday. Let us all plan to bless her to have a beautiful birthday. See Sister Tippy, that's me guys. See Sister Tippy Griffith to learn more. Thought for the week. The Bible tells us to not forget to assemble ourselves together to worship as unbelievers do. As spring and summer approach, let us not schedule God's services around your activities, but schedule your activities around God's services. These have been your GWC announcements. Please govern yourselves accordingly. Thank you.
God bless you, everybody. How great is our God? We serve a great God. And we just want to go before the throne in prayer today. Listen, if you got a request for the Lord, if you got a condition, if you got an ailment, if you got a sickness, if you got maybe you don't have anything going on in your life and you want to stand in proxy for somebody else. Maybe you know somebody that's sick, they're going through and they just don't know what to do. Why don't you put that name on your list today? And as we go before the altar in a prayer, why don't you call that name out and begin to pray for that person? Say, Pastor, listen, I'm praying for somebody else, but I need prayer myself. You might want to take your hand, put your hand on your own chest and say, God, heal me. Put your hand on your own chest and say, Lord, deliver me. You see what I'm going through. You see what I need. But God is able. Does anybody know that God is able on today? Anybody know God is a prayer answering God? And we know that he's a great God. He's a wonderful God. He's a comforting God. He's a mighty God. He's a loving God. He's a provider. Listen, I don't know about you, but can't nobody provide for me like the Lord. Can't nobody take care of me like Jesus. Can't nobody take care of you like Jesus. You might not even give him the credit. You might give the credit to your job. You might give it to your paycheck. You might give it to some of your career. But don't you know this? You wouldn't have a career. You wouldn't have a job. You you wouldn't have a paycheck if the Lord hadn't given it. So why don't you give the one that deserves the praise? Why don't you give the glory to the one that provides for you? He's our Jehovah Jireh. He's our provider. And listen, my brother, my sister, if you don't have nothing to thank God for, listen, let thank him because you alive today. Go ahead and praise him because you woke, he woke you up to another day. Go ahead and lift him up because your eyes, look, he opened them big old eyes of yours this morning so you can see a sun shining, so you can see a day you've never seen before and know nothing about. He didn't have to do that. You could have lay in your bed, still sleep, but God had mercy. And for that, you ought to tell the Lord, thank you, God. We come to your throne right now, God. Lord, first, worshiping you for being a great God. Worship you because you are our great God. And you say you're a great God. And we are, you are greatly to be praised. God, we praise and we glorify, we magnify you, and we lift you up. God, we ask, oh God, that you wash us, oh God, in your blood. Look on us, oh God. And what we've done wrong, oh God. What we missed the mark this week, oh God. Lord, well, we didn't do it quite the way you said do it, Lord. Lord, if we were arrogant, if we were narcissistic, if we were full of doubt, if our motives were wrong, oh God, Lord, if, this, if, if, if we abused the authority that you gave us through your name, God, Lord, forgive us right now, God. And Lord, increase our faith and confidence and trust in you. And God, we even look at those that are looking on right now, God, that may be sick. I pray, God, that you look on Sister Ariana Jones in Virginia, who's on the line with us, who's on the call with us today, who's tuned into the broadcast, God. Lord, this young lady, oh God, Lord, you, you know what she's going through, God. You know what she's been through, oh God. But yet even everything that she's been through, oh God, she's still praising you. She's still blessing your name. And God, you know what she needs you to do for, oh God. And Lord, if it be thy will, oh God, do it for Ariana, oh God. Do it because we believe you, God. Deliver, oh God. Give her the desires of her heart. Oh my God, answer prayer for Ariana right now in the name of Jesus. Because she's a young lady having faith. She's a young lady that believes in you, oh God. Show yourself strong to her. And God, then we're praying for all those that are on our bereaved list. Those names that are going across the screen. Those families that have lost fathers and, and, and mothers. Oh God, those families that have lost nieces and nephews, sisters and brothers, so many are grieving, God. So many are still grieving. Lord, they're struggling with grief, God. They're not able to shake the grief, God. They're not able to get past it, God. They want to and they try to, but some kind of way grief grabs them back and puts them in another headlock, oh God, and holds them too tight, oh God. But Lord, release that grief right now in the name of Jesus. Speak peace, God. Speak peace to those families, the Beatty's family, oh God. Speak peace to the triplets, oh God, to the Vasquez family today, oh God. Speak peace and comfort to the Winston family, to the Edwards and the Richardson family, oh God. Oh my God, to Millicent Mac Mac Millie McIntyre and her daughter, Cece, God. Oh my God, give them strength, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Look on the Smith, oh God, the Jacksons, oh God. 
oh my God, in the loss of their father. Look on First Lady Howell, oh God. Strengthen her, oh God, as she's dealing with grief. You see, oh God, what she's been going through. Oh God, in the Sherwoods and the Trice, the Marshalls who lost their mother, oh God. Oh my goodness, in the Perth family, oh God, the Fowler and the Gibson family that lost their daughter and their niece, oh God. In the Perth family where he lost his battle with cancer, God. Lord, those families need your help right now, God. And we're praying for them, God, that you would strengthen them. You said, blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. And God, we thank you for your healing. Your, we ask that you save, set free, and deliver on this broadcast. And Lord, that after this broadcast would have expired, somebody may come crying, what must I do to be saved? All for the glory and honor of God. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen and amen. Thank you all so much. And we welcome to the Word Works broadcast. This is Pastor Steve, your favorite online pastor. And this is your Word Works broadcast, where as the announcer said it earlier, if you can just believe God, if you can trust God for his have confidence and his ability and not your own, your breakthrough, your miracle, your healing, your deliverance. Woo! Listen, I've got excited when I'm thinking about it's just one word away. And Pastor Steve, what is that one word? That word is belief. That word is thank you. Listen, if you can begin to thank God where you are, if you can begin to thank God in the situation you're in right now, God will give you something else to be thankful for. Listen, praise makes room for more. Come on, you ought to tell yourself that praise makes room for more. And that's how, listen, we're not going to wait till the battle is over, but we're going to shout now. And I'm excited about your blessing. Denisha, I'm excited about your blessing. Deanna, St. Louis, I'm excited about your blessing. Ariana, it's just about to happen. Oh, my goodness, young lady, you've been faithful. You've been dedicated. It's just about to happen. Tippy, listen, you got some things on the altar, girl. It's going to happen for you if you can trust God. First lady is just about to happen. And all you that are listening that will hear this later on, listen, we speak in faith. God wants to do it for you. If you can trust and believe him, he'll do it for you right now. And we thank and we praise him and we celebrate God. We're going to go into the word. I'm not going to talk long today, but we're going to go into the word of God because I believe somebody needs a word. Listen, is there anybody out there that needs a word from the Lord? Listen, I, I just need to know, does anybody need a word from the Lord? See, that's why we tune into the broadcast. That's why we come to church, that we might hear from the Lord so he can speak a word that'll give us comfort. Isn't that right, Sister Ford? He'll speak a word that'll give us comfort. In Jesus' name we pray. Listen, so our message today, oh my goodness, we're going to go to Matthews, the 26th chapter. Come on, saints of God, grab your Bibles, get your tablets, get your phones, get your electronic devices, get your word of God, get your sword. Don't go, don't be without your sword. That's how you fight the devil. Amen. Listen, Matthew's the 26th chapter, and we're going to go to the 40th to the 45th verse. And listen, we're talking about Matthew's that is in the New Testament. It is the first book of the New Testament. So if you are in the front of the book of the Bible, you won't find Matthew there. Amen. But you got to go a little further and you will find him towards the back of the book. And I'm going to put my scripture up on the screen for you here so that you all are able to see. All right. And we're coming from the King James Version. And it's going to read as such. And he cometh unto the disciples and findeth them asleep, and saith unto Peter, what, could ye not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. He went away again the second time and prayed, saying, O oh, my father, if this cup may not pass away from me, except I drink it, thy will be done. And he came and found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy. And he left them and went away again and prayed the third time, saying the same words. 
Verse 45 said, Then cometh he to his disciples and saith unto them, Sleep on now and take your rest. Behold, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed unto sinners. I'm going to go back and read that 46th verse, that 40th verse again that says, And he cometh unto the disciples and finding them asleep, saying, Peter, what could you not watch with me? One hour. If I could use for a text today, I'm going to use a text that says, listen, can you watch one hour? That's it. I like that. Why don't you just put that finger up and say one hour, just one hour. Can you watch one hour? Can you tune in to the broadcast one hour? Can you watch the program for one hour? Can you give God one hour? Oh, pastor, I can give him one hour. Listen, we don't want you just to give him one hour, but we want you to give him one hour of undivided attention. Oh, can you can you just take this time and say, right now, I'm giving this hour to God. Right now, I'm giving this hour. I'm turning. Listen, you please turn your television off. Put Turn the pots off. Sometimes we're trying to do a bunch of things instead of focusing in on the word. We're going to talk today about Jesus is asking a question, and he's asking all of us the same question he asked his disciples. Can you watch one hour? Amen. We find in our story today, Jesus is taking his disciples into the Garden of Gethsemane. Uh-huh. Jesus goes into the Garden of Gethsemane and he took with him his disciples. And Jesus had what we call a crew. He had an inner circle. He had three fellows, the Peter, James, and John, that of all the disciples that he would bring with them, he always took Peter, James, and John just a little further. Um, the Garden of Gethsemane was a known as a beautiful garden. It was it was outside the skirts of the city, and you can go into the garden and you can walk. Some of you might be familiar with botanical gardens. Some of you say you like you maybe you have a walking path. There's a beautiful path in your neighborhood where it's pretty. There's a beautiful garden area in your community where it's pretty. Some of you all like to go by the lake and you like to walk by the lake. But you find that place to go where you can get some serenity. You find that place to go where you can get some peace. Sometimes you need a little privacy when you want to talk to God. Does anybody listening today have a place in your house that you can go to and get in touch with God? Uh-huh. I'm talking about a place where you can shut away from the kids. You can get you can shut away from your husband. You can steal away from your wife. Uh, and you can have that one-on-one -on -one time with God. Jesus had a place. He said God in Gethsemane was his prayer closet. We know Jesus prayed all the time and everywhere, but he had a specific time where he used this beautiful garden of Gethsemane because he knew that his time to leave was coming close. He His job for why he came here to be crucified and to rise again on the third day to be the, the propitiation for sin for all mankind was soon to come. And understand this, when you have a sacrifice, understand when you have a job to do that sometimes there can be some anxiety. Am I right? Listen, if you got a presentation to do at work, if you got a demonstration to do, maybe they're calling on you to train somebody. They're calling on you to present and you have that anxiety. Some of you all students are in school and you're preparing for graduation. You're in your finals right now. You're, some of you are taking your ACTs and your SATs and you're preparing for graduation and you feel a little anxiety about those finals. It's nothing wrong with feeling that. You say, I feel like I need to go somewhere because my anxiety levels are pretty high right now. And I need to go and relieve them. And listen, we don't go relieve our anxiety by putting substances in our body. We don't go putting abusive substances in our body to rid ourselves of the anxiety. We need to do like Jesus did. Jesus prayed. Jesus said, I'm going to go and talk to my father, 
Oh my goodness, every once in a while you need to call your father but say, Dad, I just want to talk to you. Call mama but say, Mama, I just want to talk to you. And when you don't have mama no more, and some of you that have lost your fathers just recently, you don't have dad no more to call up and say, Dad, what do you think about this? I'm, I'm, I'm having a little fear about this. I'm a little uncertain about what's getting ready to happen. I don't know how it's going to work out. Dad, can you tell me something? that'll make me feel better. Well, if you don't have that anymore, I want you to know my brother and my sister, God is there. You still have God. Mama's not there no more. Ariana, mama is not there no more. But you're not alone. You can still go to God and you can tell God all about it. Thank you, Jesus. So Jesus knew that with the level of anxiety that he had, he was able to go to God. So he took his disciples into the Garden of Gethsemane where he wanted to pray. And, and see, the garden, you would only go so far. And he said, y'all stay right here because I got to go a little further. Come on. Can you look at somebody and say, go a little further? Why don't you type that in the chat and say, listen, go a little further? See, Jesus knew he had to go a little further. Sometimes we get in our situation and we go so far and then we stop. And we stop too soon for the blessing. We stop too soon to get the miracle. We stop too soon to get that answer from God. But we need to go a little further. Uh huh. So Jesus told his disciples, stay right here. I got to go a little further. So he says, and he told, he said, I need you fellas to do something for me. He said, now I'm going in there because I need to pray. I'm going there. I need to get in touch with God and I need to know. Whoa, this is where I get excited. Jesus, I need to know that I got my help is with me, that I, that you guys are praying with me. See, sometimes, Che, we want pastor to do all the praying. Listen, sometimes we want pastor to do everything, but listen, pastor needs help. Jesus said, I need to know that I got my support team with me. My network is with me. My community is with me. He said, disciples, when I go in there to pray in there, I want y'all praying out here. Did y'all catch that? Listen, I'm going to go in there and pray but I'm going to need you all to pray out here. See, Jesus didn't want them sitting there waiting for him to come back. He wanted them to participate in what he was doing, but he needed a little alone time. He said, fellas, I want you to stay right here because I'm going to go a little further. And Jesus went on. He said, can you watch with me for one hour? What he was saying was, can you stay awoke and pray with me one hour. And, that, and that's going to be our topic for the day. Can you watch one hour? Can you tarry with me one hour? Are you so busy that you cannot sit for an hour service? Are you so busy that you can't take an hour out of your time to give God 60 minutes of undivided attention. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Jesus wanted his disciples to know, can you hang in there with me for just an hour? The Bible says he went on in and he prayed. He talked to his father and then he came back out to check on his disciples and they were falling asleep. Sometimes people can't be in church 10 minutes before their eyes start getting heavy. Sometimes that the message can't go five minutes for they yawning. Jesus said, can you all just stay awoke for an hour? Can you keep them big eyes open for an hour and pray with me? Matter of fact, not only am I praying, I'm praying for you. If I can stay up an hour and pray for you, you ought to be able to stay out here and stay awoke and, and pray with me. Come on, somebody. How many know we want God to do everything? We want him to pray. We want him to bless us. Listen, and we can't even stay awoke. And, and, and awoke may not necessarily be asleep. We can't even turn the TV off long enough to just focus on God. I tell you, sometimes I, uh, I, I, I can't wait sometimes. Okay? 
I can't wait some time, Tippy, before we get back inside again so I can I can see the faces of the people. Because a lot of times I, I don't always know what they're doing when they're off camera. I don't always know if they focusing in on camera. I can't look and see if they paying attention. Maybe they cooking. Maybe they watching TV, playing with the baby, cleaning up the house. I don't know what they doing because I can't see it. But I want to ask the question, can you all watch with me for one hour? Uh -huh. Inside of a church, we'll be here together and I'll be able to see the faces. I'll be able to see who's able to watch one hour. We have an hour Sunday school, 9 a.m. We have an hour, roughly about an hour, hour, 10 minute, 1130 broadcast. We have about an hour Bible study. Do you all have time to take an hour to come to Sunday school? Do you all have time to take an hour to come online and be with us? Do you all have an hour to show up for Bible study? This is a Jesus with Tanner. He said, disciples, I need to know, can I trust y'all to support me for one hour? Come on, somebody. Now, listen, as long as Jesus, y'all watch this now. As long as Jesus could see them, they were awoke. Y'all catch that? But the minute he stepped away and went a little further to go talk again, now he's on his second time leaving them, saying, all right, now, y'all, y'all y'all good? I'm about to go in and talk a little bit more to my father. Are y'all praying out here? Yeah, pastor, we praying. Yeah, Jesus, we praying with you. We got you, Jesus. Go on in there and talk to your dad. Jesus goes in there and talks a little bit more. He comes back out again. And what are they doing? They not praying. They sleep. They not praying. They watching TV. They not praying. They out on the yard. They not praying. They getting ready for work. They not praying. They playing with the baby. They not praying. They cleaning up the house. All Jesus want to know is, can you all pray with me? That's what he mean by can you watch. Can you watch with me? Can you pray with me? Can you support me? Can you stand and be a strength for me for one hour? Uh -huh. I like that. Chase. Chase says, help me to make more time for you, Lord. Some of us are spending more time preparing for work than we spend with our relationship with God. Our job is going to take 40 hours from us. For some of us, it's going to be 45, 50, perhaps some 60. And we spend more time on our jobs than we do with our family. And we all get caught up lifing. Everybody say lifing, lifing, lifing. We all get caught up lifing where we got responsibilities. We got things we have to take care of. But God wants to know, can you carve out some time for me and dedicate that hour to me? Uh-huh. Uh, we have something, Deanna, that's called multitasking. Everybody is a multitasker. Say, I can do this and listen, Pastor. Jesus, I can do this and support you. Jesus, I can do that. God is saying, I don't want the and. I don't want the other stuff. All I want you to do is, as I'm praying, I want you praying with me. We can't be so busy that we can't even spend time with God for one hour without trying to work on something else. And he came back and he saw his disciples again and they were asleep. Third time he came back and saw his disciples again and they were asleep. He asked the original question, Peter, can you watch with me one hour? And you know how gracious God is? He's so compassionate. Deanna, that he understands that he said, listen, I know you got things going on. It's late. I got y'all out here in all night prayer. It's two o'clock in the morning. It's three o'clock in the morning. And I brought y'all into this garden to pray. Y'all said, Jesus, I'm supposed to be in bed right now. This is past my bedtime. Look, I don't know if you, some of y'all might like be me. Listen, 9, 9, 30. 
uh, I, it ain't too much I want to do after that because about past my bedtime. Uh huh. Uh, in my spirit, in my mind, I want to participate. In my spirit, I want to do it, but my flesh gets the best of me. And Jesus understood. He said, "Fellas, I truly believe." that you all want to support me. I truly believe that y'all want to protect me. And see, another reason that Jesus wanted them to watch with him one hour is because Jesus had had about three assassinations on his life, even before going to the cross. Jesus was popular to a lot, but he was unpopular to others. And there was those out there that would love to catch Jesus vulnerable in prayer, vulnerable, not looking around him. Jesus told us to watch ye, watch and pray. That's why he said, watch ye therefore, for you know not the day nor the hour when the Son of Man come. He said, we have to watch and pray. Come on, y'all need to say, be careful to watch and pray. Listen, you can pray, but you got to keep your eyes open on your surroundings too. Jesus said, I need y'all help. I got to go in there and pray. I got to go talk to my father. I'm getting ready to do something that's going to take my life. I'm getting ready to do something that's going to be a sacrifice. It's going to be painful. It's going to be horrific. It's going to be devastating. And it's going to take everything, every strength in me to be able to go through it. And I do not want to have to worry about whether somebody going to try to kill me while I'm in prayer. Come on, somebody. I don't want to have to worry about whether the Pharisees and the Sadducees are going to come and try to kill me while I'm praying. Listen, you all understand we living in a day now where the church ain't even safe no more. People have the audacity to bring guns in the church and come from the back door to the front all the way up to the pulpit and have killed pastors right there in the church. Shot up people in the church. Pastor, we understand, we see Pastor Joel Osteen in the Lakewood Church just a few weeks ago had an after shooter event inside their church. What kind of day are we in where the saints cannot be on their knees praying Without fear, somebody's going to come in and kill them. But Jesus said, I need you fellas to watch. That's what the deacons are for. That's why churches got security. Because everybody that's coming into the church to watch one hour, they're not coming in with good intent. But we want to listen. And you know something else? When Jesus went to pray, the devil went in too. I'm about to say this and I'll be done. Listen, why are you praying? The devil is trying to show up too. Why are you away praying? The devil is trying to wreak havoc in your house. Why are you away praying? He's going to try to use that opportunity to get your kids. He's going to try to use that opportunity to get your husband, get your wife. So you need to know that you got a prayer partner. If y'all don't have a prayer partner, get you a prayer partner today. Call up and text GWC, get you a prayer partner. You ought to have somebody that you can get together with and y'all can pray and know that you they can get a prayer through. So Jesus needed his disciples to just watch for him for one hour. Listen, some of y'all eyes, look, they eyes got heavy. Jesus said, listen, you can't even stay awoke long enough for me to pray. Now the enemy, that's what the enemy, the enemy is trying to catch you sleeping. The enemy is trying to catch you nodding. I'm telling you right now, he should, the enemy is trying to rock you to sleep. rock a baby on a treetop. When the wind blows, the cradle will rock. He's trying to rock you to sleep like you rock your grandbaby to sleep. That's what the devil, why the word is going forth, why prayer is going forth, why deliverance is going forth, he's trying to distract you. He's trying to get your mind on something else. He's trying to get you playing your game. He's trying to get you doing something else. He's trying to get you watching TV. He's trying to get, he's got your, your phone ringing. He's got people texting you. Because the devil's job is to keep you from hearing the word. Did you know that the Bible says, if you want faith, faith coming by hearing and hearing the word of God. I'm going to say that again for some of y'all. Faith comes through hearing and hearing the word of God. 
Listen, when the word of God is going forth, the devil is trying to make you get sleepy because he knows if he makes you get sleepy, you will sleep through the word and your faith will be small because you didn't hear that word. And I'm just asking you all today through this message, Jesus came back and as I close, he came back and he found his disciples sleep for the last time. He didn't get mad. He didn't go off on them. He didn't start fussing at them. He said, listen, I understand that you really in your heart, you wanted to be there. You wanted to stay awoke. You wanted to attend. Listen, you wanted to show up, but you just couldn't do it. Listen, we realize that you're not going to be able to make everything but you need to try to make as much as you can. Listen, we only hold services one hour on our different programs. This summer is coming up. Activities are gonna be taking place. You're gonna be vacationing. You're gonna be spending time with family. You're gonna be going off to enjoy things. And that's all good. Make sure you do all of that. But I just wanna let you know, don't forget to watch one hour. Jesus is still looking for us to watch with him one hour. One hour at nine o'clock on Sunday morning, 11.30 on Sunday morning, seven o'clock on Thursday night. Can we still watch one hour? And understand Jesus had compassion on his disciples. He said, go on, take your rest now. Go on, go on to sleep, go on to sleep. Indeed, I recognize that you were willing. The mind was willing, but your flesh is weak. Have y'all ever been in a situation where your mind was willing to do something, but you just couldn't find it in your flesh to do it? Your heart really wanted to do it. I mean, you really, truly intended to show up. You really intended to be there. But your, but your flesh just wouldn't let you. Say, Pastor, I was just too tired. I worked too hard. I worked, listen, I, I haven't had an off day. I'm just tired, Pastor. I meant to be there. I wanted to support, and I, I, I didn't want to be disobedient, but I just didn't feel like it. That's okay. That's going to happen to all of us. But I'm just trying to let you know, listen, God is dependent on us to show up. Jesus was dependent on his disciples. to. He said, watch with me, because while y'all sleep, the enemy would have came in and got me. The enemy would have came in and tried to take me out. You all were supposed to be protecting me. Your prayers, listen, GWC, your prayers are supposed to be protecting me. Your prayers and your support are supposed to be protecting the leader. I'm asking, can y'all watch one hour three times a week? I'm asking that, can you watch one hour undivided attention? I don't mean take your phone and turn on the broadcast prop it up on the table, and then go do something else. I'm talking about can you actually sit there and support and watch one hour as if you was inside of a building? God is dependent on us to do that. Thank you, Jesus. And if you can do that, Jesus will bless you. Jesus will heal you. Gee, that thing you asking for, you are positioning yourself for God to do it. That's right, Chase. She said, forgive us, Lord. We need your guidance and correction. This is what it's all about. Jesus corrected his disciples, but he did it in love. He did it out of compassion. He said, I understood. I'm not fussing at y'all, fellas. I'm just saying, listen, if I'm in there praying, can y'all pray with me? If I can show up every week and do this, can't y'all show up too? If, if I can give this broadcast, these services, my undivided attention, can't y'all do it too? The least you can do is show up and invite somebody to come and be on the broadcast. Amen. God says, I want you to show up for me. And listen, if you show up for God, God will show up for you. Ariana, God bless you, my darling. Listen, Ariana, if you can keep showing up for God, God to show up. Ariana, she, she, Ariana, she texted me today. She said, I can be there. She told me, she said, Pastor, I can watch for an hour. I love it when people grab hold of it. They grab hold of the vision. She texted me, message said, Pastor, 
I can watch for an hour. You can count on me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for Ariana in her dedication and in her situation that y'all don't know nothing about. The fact that she's able to do it in the situation she's currently in means God is just going to reward her all the more because she chose to put God over her situation. Thank you, Jesus. And with that being said, I'm going to close on that note. Can you watch one hour? Y'all can watch Netflix nine hours. Y'all can watch Hulu 10 hours. Y'all can watch all of them channels all weekend. Y'all can binge watch all. I have people tell me their plans for Saturday is to watch all 20 seasons of something. I don't understand how people can watch. They will refuse to miss their favorite program but they cannot, but they have no problem missing church. They have no problem missing Sunday school. They have no problem missing Bible study. But when it comes to their favorite TV show, their favorite gaming system, their favorite activity, sometimes people just don't want, they don't want their nap interrupted. But I don't understand how people, and listen, I watch TV too. I watch wrestling, but it's a lot of times I miss wrestling because I have something more important. I can come back and watch it later. But if it's time for me to be spending time with God, wrestling takes a back seat. If it's time for me to be in Bible study, it takes a back seat. And look, I'm not sitting there watching wrestling and talking to y'all. I'm not sitting up there watching my program and talk and listening. No, when I'm doing this, my I you get you get pastors undivided attention. And that's the least that we can expect from you. And that's what Jesus is saying today. Can you watch in this last day and hour? We are living in the last hour, y'all. We're living in the last day. Can you all stay alert? The devil is loose and there's danger in the land. Can y'all stay alert? and stay prayerful, stay alert, and stay vigilant, stay sober. And I mean sober-minded. Can you, can you keep a clear mind and keep a watchful eye? Because the devil is trying to take as many of us with him before he gets out of here. But the church is sleeping, y'all. I'm talking about the body of Christ is asleep. And we have to wake up, Zion. Wake up and pay attention. Watch and pray. Watch and pray. Listen to what he said in this last one. He said, watch and pray. He said, then come of the disciples. And he said, he said, watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. Y'all see that? Watch and pray. That means attend and pray. Keep your eyes open and pray that ye enter not into temptation. Listen, if you are not praying, you will fall into temptation. That's it, Che. It's time to rise up, church. Zion, rise up. Oh, Zion, what's the matter now? Zion, you sleeping. That's why the devil is running loose, because the church is asleep. The saints are asleep. Or they not sleep, but they got more important things to do. And you say, this broadcast will be over with in just a minute. I got stuff to do. But I just want you to know, if you can watch, be careful that you don't stop praying. That's when temptation show up. The devil is going about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. He's looking for the weak ones. He's looking for the sleepy ones. He's looking for the distracted ones. He's looking for the preoccupied ones. He's looking for the weak ones. He's trying to catch those that don't know how to pray and watch. We got to be like them deer. You know how them animals do, Denisha? They eat and then they look up. They eat and they look up. They stop and they look around. They are observant of their surroundings because they know if they get distracted too long, a lion or something to come up and rip them apart. That's what the devil is. He's a lion in the bushes. He's stalking you. Deanna, he's stalking you. Che, the devil is stalking you. Tippy, the devil is stalking you. He's stalking me. And we got to watch out for each other. We got to pray for each other. And that's what Jesus was trying to tell his disciples. The day he said, the lion is in the bushes. 
And I need you all to watch out and protect me while I'm praying. Because I'm going to protect you when you praying. And if we can do that, church, I believe we'll be a stronger church. I believe the devil will lose if the church would rise up. If the church would stop being so busy on stuff that don't have nothing to do with much of anything or learn how to prioritize, we're not saying you can't watch stuff. We cannot saying you can't have your fun. That's not what we're saying at all. But listen, you got to give God his time. And if we're going to be any type of church, GWC, we got to be a faithful church. We got to be a committed people. We got to be a dedicated people that show up every time. And I'm praying for y'all, and y'all pray for pastor. And with that being said, we thank you for the word, God. We thank you for your word today. We thank you, God, Lord, that you gave us the opportunity to speak your word, God. We pray that somebody would have heard the message today, Lord, and that they would come crying, what must I do to be saved? Lord, wake up those that the devil is spiritually rocking to sleep. There, he's rocking them to sleep spiritually, God. They're nodding on him in the spiritual realm. God, wake them up right now. Rise us up for your glory. Rise us up right now, God. Help us to be sober and vigilant and keep an eye out for the devil. And let us pray for one another. And listen, my brother, sister, if you don't know the Lord Jesus in the pardon of your sins, we ask, oh God, we ask that you repeat this prayer after me and say, Father, I'm sorry. For every sin I've ever committed, wash me in your blood. I denounce Satan and I accept you as my Lord and Savior. My brother, my sister, if you pray that simple prayer, we believe you got born again. We believe that now you can come and watch with him one hour. God says, my eye is on the sparrows. Listen, you can know my brother, sister, if his eye is watching the sparrow, he sure is watching you. Get yourself into a Bible-believing church. We believe GWC is that ministry for you. If you're in our area, and you don't have to be in our area. You can be an e-member. Why don't you contact us at info at gwcministries.org. That's info at gwcministries.org and say, Pastor Steve, I accepted Christ as my Savior, and I want to be a member of this ministry. Listen, my sister, my brother, we would love to have you. Listen, you are part of the royal family, not the GWC family, but only, but you are part of the body of Christ. Welcome to the family. Come on, can we clap our hands? Somebody out there just accepted the Lord. Somebody out there just gave their life to the Lord. Can we get excited about that? Listen, we can't even get excited about somebody getting saved. Listen, with that somebody that God has snatched out of the hands of the devil. This is why we're praying and we're watching so that we can watch for those that we can snatch from the devil. And we thank you. And listen, now it's time for the our offering. Listen, offering time is blessing time. Listen, why don't you present the Lord? Let us present our tithes and offerings to the Lord. We don't tithe, uh, uh, we don't tithe to be blessed. We tithe because we are blessed. We tithe because we believe God and we trust him and that we owe God everything that we have. And listen, we're going to put the given information on the screen. If you can be a blessing to us, if you heard something today that spoke to your heart, then we ask that you would sow a seed today. I'm not even going to really put an amount on there. I know we got our, our Sunday school thing, but I want you to give as the Lord has uh, given to you to give. So ask the Lord and pray, say, God, what should I give today? How much should I, what seed should I sow? And then let the Lord speak to you. And then what he tells you to give, that's what you give to be a blessing. And you can't be God's giving. The more He give you, the more you give him, the more he gives back to you. Amen. Do I have any believers out there? Do I have any believers? Do I have any people out there that know tithing work? Anybody out there know tithing work? Now, if you don't, if you don't pay your tithes, then you don't know it work. But why not try it today? Listen, if you can play that you can if you can play the lotto, if you can take a chance and play the Powerball, you ought to be able to take a chance on God. Thank you, Jesus. The Powerball is one in a billion chance that you'll win. But you're paying that money every day for that chance. Why don't you put it where you know God, somebody can keep it? Jesus can give it back to you, and he can give it back to you in ways that the Powerball couldn't give to you. 
Thank you, Jesus. With that being said, God bless you, everybody. We will see you all again back here this Thursday night for eHealth Night. Amen. For eHealth Night this Thursday, where we're going to have another great healthcare professional who is going to be with us to talk to us about a topic. As the announcer said, you are what you eat. I'm going to put that up here right now. You are what you eat. We're going to have evangelist Dr. Rhonda Morris from Baytown, Texas, going to be here this Thursday at 7 p.m. so we can talk about you are what you eat so we can be healthier people. Listen, you got to watch your weight. You got to watch your health. You got to watch your um, body, don't you? Amen. You got to watch your mind because the devil is looking to use that to take us out too. So be here on Thursday at 7 o'clock and watch one hour on Thursday night where we can learn how to be a healthier, happier you and help you be the best version of yourself. With that being said, God bless you. Then we'll see you back Sunday morning at 9 a.m. for Sunday School 2.0. God bless you, everybody. Enjoy the rest of your day. And listen, give God his hour this week.